an incredibly busy morning here. We need to update you on a breaking news right now. This, what you're looking at, is the aftermath of a deadly wrong way crash that happened early this morning on 694 northbound in Oakdale. It's not far from Stillwater Boulevard in the East Metro. Yeah, Eva has been on scene all morning. She just got new details about the crash from State Patrol minutes ago. Eva, what are you hearing? Yeah, Jason, we just got these new details within the past 10 minutes. What we know now is there were three cars involved. One driver was ejected, two were taken to the hospital, two people, and one person died. Now, we do have video in from overnight of this crash. Uh, we'll tell you that we cut it off right before the vehicles collided because it is pretty nasty and quite serious. But let's take a look at that and I'll explain what happened. So a Toyota Corolla was driving south in the northbound left lane of 694. It crashed into a Pontiac Vibe traveling northbound. The Pontiac spun out and hit a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van, and the driver of the Pontiac was ejected, and a juvenile passenger was taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. The driver of the van was also taken to the hospital as well. Now, we are just about a half mile down from this crash, and um, we see that the traffic is still closed off in that lane and uh, we don't know how much longer it could be but we'll continue to monitor that for you guys but again we do now know that three cars were involved and uh, megan has been tra tracking the traffic all morning uh, and has more information for you regarding that, Megan. Yeah, Eva, thank you. So crash reconstruction, uh, the crews there are still on scene. You can see here we have an officer uh, down here on the scene on the in the northbound lanes of 694. So this will take a while this morning, especially considering the severity of this crash. Now the southbound lanes are open near Stillwater Boulevard, but again, 694 northbound before it curves into the westbound uh, direction is closed in this area. Again, southbound lanes are open. So we'll show you right now. This is uh, 94. You will need to take exit 57. If you're coming from 94 to this area, you, you won't be able to go uh, on 694 northbound this morning. Here's a look right now all across the metro. Aside from this crash, things are moving along very well this morning all across uh, the metro. And of course, we'll keep you posted on this throughout the morning. Yeah, just awful. Mm -hmm. All right, Megan, thank you. We are also tracking rain from overnight. Right now you're looking at clouds hovering over downtown Minneapolis to the left and Bidet and Mikoska there to the right. So let's get to Guy who's tracking it all out. The heat remains though, guys, sitting at 73 this it's morning. It's not going anywhere, right? And right on time too. Uh, today's the start of meteorological summer and it sure feels a whole lot like summer with temperatures running well above average. It's 72 right now. Earlier, just moments ago, we were waking up the temperatures in the mid 70s, close to our afternoon average high temperature. Uh, and we'll be climbing all the way up to the 90s later on this afternoon. So we're running well above average. A couple spotty showers, mainly in northern Minnesota, but still here in the metro, we were finding a few spotty showers earlier this morning, and we're still waking up to some of that too. Now over western Wisconsin. So pavement could be a little damp. It just really depends uh, on where you're watching from. Most of us didn't find any rain overnight. You'll see hour by hour planners showing by 11 o'clock already in the mid 80s. So the heat will waste no time. Just get ready for a, a hot and a slightly muggy day. All right, Guy, thank you very much. And it's been a busy morning here in the Carol Evan newsroom. Also breaking overnight, four people are in custody right now after leading police on a wild car chase through Golden Valley. The video is incredible. Mm -hmm. CC is live in Golden, Va Golden Valley breaking down what happened and more on that video. Hey, CC. Hey, good morning. So of the four who were taken into custody, two actually led police on a really dangerous foot chase across the highway that ended here where we are, where they arrested the two who uh, were on foot. One of the suspects was arrested right behind me here at this parking garage. The other one was arrested across the street here at a cafe. So uh, let's kind of break down how this all happened. If you take a look at your screen here, you'll be able to see it. MnDOT video new overnight to us. You can see a car had to come to an abrupt stop while the two suspects were crossing 394, both of them just narrowly avoiding traffic a couple of times. 
While police chase them, other officers are securing the scene where the suspect's car crashed on 394. Eventually, the two on the run are taken into custody, which I mentioned earlier, just shortly after the chase. And since there was a crash earlier in the night, the suspects were evaluated by paramedics at the scene and then taken to the hospital. But again, just wild video shown there. Right now, we are waiting for a response from State Patrol about how this chase and crash, how all of that even started. Once we find out more information from them, we'll update you with the latest. Jason, Alicia. Hey, you just hold your breath seeing them run across the highway like that. Crazy stuff. CC Gaines reporting live this morning. Thank you. We have another breaking story we're following this morning along the Canadian border, a large train derailment in Lancaster, Minnesota. That's about six hours northwest of us here in the Twin Cities in Kitson County. And this is video of the derailment posted on social media. Canadian Pacific sent us information just a few hours ago confirming about two dozen cars carrying hazardous materials went off the tracks in an unpopulated area. The railroad says nothing is leaking and there are no injuries. Meanwhile, Governor Walls tweeted late last night saying experts are on the way to survey the site and will make sure that the community has everything they need. We will have more on the derailment in our next half hour. This morning, crews are still working to get one of the Prairie Island nuclear generators back up and running after what XL Energy is calling an unusual event on Saturday. XL tells us multiple fire alarms went off after an external transformer malfunctioned, triggering an automatic shutdown. XL says there's no risk to the public. For context, an unusual event is the lowest of emergency classification set by the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Sad story here. This morning we're hearing from the mother of 14-year-old Alan Davis. He was shot and killed in an alley in Minneapolis on Memorial Day. Alan's family told us they believe he was lured out of his home by fellow teens who he thought were his friends before being shot to death. Police found Alan at about 5.30 p.m. On, Mor on Memorial Day in an alleyway behind Bryant Avenue North, north of 37th Avenue. The Minneapolis Police Chief Brian O'Hara said Monday they had active leads, but no one has been arrested so far. Alan's family, meanwhile, says he's been in trouble in the past, but had a good heart and didn't want to live the life some of his friends were living, being involved in crime at such a young age. They say Alan was bullied and threatened for that. They ran my son down. They had my son believe that they really cared about him and they loved him. And y'all know who y'all are. I really want y'all to be real men. Y'all did this to him. Well, I'm on the internet bragging about it. You tell the people, well, come on out. Be real. So to make things even more heartbreaking here, Alan's 15-year-old sister, Alicia, says she and her mom have been taunted online by teens this week since his death. Right now, they're pleading with people who have information to give it to police or to call Crime Stoppers. In a few hours, a licensing hearing will start for Billy's on Grand that could determine its future. The iconic St. Paul Bar and Grill is seeking to rebrand as Gather, Eat, Gather Eatery and Bar. This comes a few months after they were fined a second time for license violations. The bar has also faced fierce criticism over increased violence in the area. Billy's is preparing to close for six weeks this summer for renovations. Today, more than 55,000 Minnesotans on probation or parole can start registering to vote. This morning, there's a rally and registration drive to help the first of those Minnesotans submit their forms. It comes after Governor Walls signed the Restore the Vote Act back in March to allow some convicted felons to vote as soon as they're released from jail or prison. The rally begins at 10 a.m. at the Arlington Hills Community Center in St. Paul, followed by the registration drive and canvassing. At 1 p.m., Governor Walls plans to sign the largest infrastructure bill in state history. The legislature will spend $2.6 billion on the bonding bill to fund different projects across our state. Let's take you to a live look from Washington, D.C. here at 609, where soon the Senate will take up the bill to raise the debt ceiling. In four days, the U.S. will run out of money. NBC's Ryan Nobles has the details on the House vote. It wasn't easy, but after months of negotiations back and forth between the White House and Kevin McCarthy, the House of Representatives has passed a deal to raise the debt ceiling and put in caps and cuts on the federal budget. This is just the start of the process here in the Congress. The bill will now go to the Senate, where there is already Republicans and Democrats concerned about what's in this bill, but they don't have very much time to fight about it. They need to pass this bill before Monday's June 5th deadline for the government to run out of money. Ahead on the Today Show, we'll break down 
the vote in the House and talk about what's ahead in the Senate. All right, it is 610 here on your Thursday. We're out here in the backyard, and I just want to take off my jacket and put right. on some shorts How and a does sweatshirt it feel, right now. Though? It's a little muggy. Can you feel it? I can from feel Florida? it. Okay. Definitely feel the mugginess and the, and the humidity. It's, it's real out here. Yeah, and temperatures are going to keep warming up, too. Today is the start of meteorological summer. Right on time, temperatures well above average now, and of course will be that way for the afternoon. Let's jump into radar because we had a few showers just pop up. Earlier this morning, the atmosphere has been unstable for days, so that's possible once you get a little short wave pushing through. It doesn't take much to get those showers going, and we saw a few showers pop up. Now, they are very short-lived, so if you're finding a damp pavement in your neighborhood, that's why we had some showers move through while you were sleeping. Let's zoom in. Zoom in tight. You can see just how isolated these showers are right now. Look at North Metro. Yeah, just a couple isolated spotty showers near Baldwin, near North Branch into Western Wisconsin. The rest of us dry temperatures in the low 70s dew points in the low 60s yeah you can feel the humidity so heads up if you're getting ready to take the workout outdoors or if you're getting ready to step out take the pup out temperatures back in the mid to upper 70s by 8 a.m 76 temperatures getting close to 80 degrees by mid morning and then once we hit the late morning hours we're already pushing the mid 80s so we'll warm up pretty quickly today and record highs uh, possible for some. The record is 92. I'm going with high of 90 degrees, so it's possible. Uh, we'll have that chance for isolated showers and storms to pop back up for the afternoon. All right, let's get into tomorrow. Rinse and repeat. I think we'll find a better chance for storms and temperatures will try to cool off and will dry out as we get into next week.